Hallelujah, what a savior. We want to appreciate the choir directed by Brother Shem, giving us that lovely rendition. And preceding that, we have um, Sister Naomi from Germany on the piano, beautifully played, setting the scene for our service tonight. It's our turn to sing together. With, we begin with hymn number 198, 198. Taking verses 1, 3, and 4, you are all welcome to this revival service. It is the prayer of our heart that the revivalist himself, who was here before we all got here, we revive everyone here tonight. Amen. For our internet audience, you are one welcome as well. We pray that the Lord will bless you too wherever you are. We are going to sing together hymn number 198. Verses 1, 3, and 4, and a couple of more other songs. And we are going to be led tonight by Sister Olas. Showers fall. Our next song is saying, There shall be showers of blessing. Since this is the promise of love, there shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Amen. We'll take verse 1, 2, and 4. Verses 1, 2, and 4. CGS 197. CGS 197.
know that the Lord will hear our prayers. Um, our next song is CGS 203. CGS 203. I have a precious Savior. Amen. We'll take verse 1 and 3 only of the song. Verses 1 and 3 only of the song. CGS 203. Our song before prayer is CGS 246. CGS 246. I lay my sins on Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God. He bears them all and frees us from the accursed load. Amen. We know that that's what the Lord will do for us this evening on the altars, that all those who will come, they will receive salvation, sanctification, baptism, healing, or whatever it may be, we know we have that promise that we should ask and he will do it. So we're going to take um, verse 1, 2, and then for those of us that can stand, we'll take verse 4, standing after which we shall be led in congregational prayers.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Amen. we thank you this day. Amen. We give you all the glory. Amen. We honor you. Amen. We worship you. Amen. Lord, thank you for the blessings of the morning. Amen. You blessed us. Amen. Lord, we come again this evening for some more. Amen. Come and revive us, Lord. Amen. We lay our sins before you, Jesus. Amen. Our griefs before you, Jesus. Our burdens before you, Jesus. Amen. This evening, Lord, come and carry Amen. our griefs, Amen. our burdens, Amen. our sicknesses, Amen. our wants, our needs Amen. tonight, Lord. Amen. Oh, we are looking for showers of blessings. Amen. You have been present. You are going to be present today. Amen. Come and bless us, Lord. Amen. Bless the preacher. Amen. Speak to our hearts. Amen. Save souls. Amen. Sanctify. Amen. Baptize the Holy Ghost and fire. Heal the sick Amen. and revive us, Lord. Amen. We ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you turn your hymn book to number 13, number 13 will be our song to open the testimony in a bit. But before we sing, the activities lined up for tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, all as laid out in the um, uh, program that you've been giving, more especially Bible teaching every morning except on Wednesday when we have free time, but for Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, Bible teaching at 10, revival and evangelistic service at 7.30. Let us remember that. For tomorrow in particular, we have Children's Church in the afternoon at 3 p.m. And prior to that, they will have their Children's Choir and Orchestra practice at 2 p.m. Um, a bit of that, I believe, they did this afternoon. And they want all the children involved to be prepared against the children's church service um, tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. I'm also glad to announce that um, Brother Darrell and his wife are here. Yeah. They need to just have a bit of rest, and hopefully, Lord willing, from tomorrow morning, we are going to be um, together for all the meetings. Thank you for your prayers. I've been told that um, I should extend appreciation to our uh, saints from Peckham Branch that worked in the kitchen or in the cafeteria today. Good job. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. They said that you, you set a good example and we will expect the same to follow from all other branches. So Bexley, Bexley is the next one. Bexley tomorrow. Kitchen staff. Bexley tomorrow for afternoon and the evening meal. Remember that. Um, we're going to have the song that I called, number 13. We are going to take verses 1, 2, and 5. Verses 1, 2, and 5. And then we open the testimony. I observed that Brother Kenwali from Bexley and Sister Shadi from Manchester have been standing and sitting, standing and sitting. At the end of those three verses, uh, Sister Shade will start, Brother Akinwale will join, and then, of course, I believe um, those who want to um, give a shout for the victory that the Lord has given them can as well join them. And then for our first special, we are going to have a special choir from Zim. At the end of that um, Zim choir, um, 
when I was in Zimbabwe, it took me some time to know that Zimbabwe back there is Zim, Zim. So that's what I mean. They will come to give us the first special, and at the end of that first special, three of them will testify, two minutes only, not longer than that. At the end of their testimony, three of them, we are going to have the last special, which is, it is no secret by the choir, at the end of which Brother Jimmy Godwin, one of our ministers from Scotland, will give the word by God's grace. Sister Olaf. me and for the baptism of Holy Spirit. I want to thank God because here I am. I'm still standing. Here I am. It's just by His grace. Not by my own power or by anything. It's just by God's grace. It was a year exactly on Saturday that I had a car accident. Fatal car accident in Nigeria. My plan is to go home for car meeting in Nigeria, but unfortunately, I couldn't reach anywhere. But I thank God, but God saved my, oh, he, he saved me. He saved my children. No one was dead. Even the driver was not injured. I, I give God all the glory. And I thank God for the wonderful husband God has given me. He stood by me. I thank God for the children of God. They pray for me. I, God in his mercy, he kept me up to now. I, before I was discharged, I was telling my doctor, you know what, it's time for me to go home. He was like, no, you can't go yet. You need to go and do a blood test. I was like, what exactly do you want from the blood test? He said, oh, if the blood test is more than three point something. I said, all right. I kept to that faith. I said, you know, don't worry. My God will definitely do it. The exact point that you want, it is what it's going to be. I went for the blood test. They said, oh, hold on, woman. I said, all right, no problem. I will hold on, but definitely I'm going home. When I had the blood test, it was exactly 3.9. I said, you see, I told you, doctor, that it will be exactly what you want or above what you want. I said, all right, you can go home tomorrow. I got home. You know, devil has his own plan. While I was eating, sitting down in the sitting room, I just went off like that. I shouted Jesus. My sister doesn't know where that Jesus was coming from. She ran straight to me. What happened, Shade? I said, Auntie, just take me out. I need a fresh air. She lied me down on the floor, start fanning. But I thank God, God restored me back. He brought me back. You know what? I just can't explain everything. Because that who knew exactly that week that I traveled, he, God gave me a gift on Wednesday that was like, oh, Temi, I'm going home. Well, it was Wednesday that this gift came in. Then let me just go. I don't need to stay behind. You know what? Devil have his own plan. But God 
prove it that I am, I am that I am. Yeah. For him to give Joshua not even a scratch, he kept Joanna in that car accident. It's just by his grace. I thank God because God always has mercy for his own children. Although I'm not opportune to be born in this gospel, but my uncle introduced this gospel to me. And God gave me the opportunity to grab it. And since then, God has been hauling love for me. Uh, God came, helped me through the escape through the order of immigration. That was last year. And uh, since then, God has been hauling love to me. I have to travel home to go and see my mother in Nigeria. After three years, I got home. I saw her. She was happy to see me. But during that period, my mother, she passed away and she came back. We were just looking at her on the floor. It reassured me that heaven is real. When she came back, she said, oh, I'm back here again. She wasn't happy. She narrated what she saw. Ah, brethren, heaven is real. What we read in the Bible is still the same over there. It's, it's a lot of things. My mother, she wasn't happy of coming back. But by and large, she came back. I saw some want later, she... Uh, she was, you know, I can see the pain in his face. It's not so painful, but I told the brethren that, brethren, pray for my mother. Now, that was November, at the beginning of November. If God wants to keep her to see her under restitution, let her be alive. If not, let God take her away. At the middle of that month, God took her away. Now, I went back to Nigeria. I prayed that God should give me, God will provide for me and protect me. I don't have any penny on me. As you know, I just passed through the order of immigration. I've asked out of work for some, for some years. But miraculously, the children of God prayed for me. I couldn't even know how the thing happens. I can't even say it. I can't see money. I, I, I had SS. After the barrier, God gave me SS, more than what I was begging for. So I thank God for all this. God kept me through all the barrier, everything, and God provided for me through all the journey, everything. Nothing happened. Everything went on smoothly. So I thank God for this. And children of God, where my mother is, she is at the moment, I want to go there. Where, where the heaven, I want to go there. Please pray for me that I and my family will get to the airplane. In, in, in. Amen.
this evening that he can also save people from Zim. I thank God that I was brought up by Christian parents in the apostolic faith. At the age of 13, the Lord saved my soul. He later sanctified me and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. If you had asked me at the beginning of this year that I would be in the UK camp meeting, I would have said it's impossible. But I thank God, here am I. Amen. And the Lord is blessing me. Amen. This morning, I stood before God's mirror. <laughs> and I asked God, <laughs> to search my heart. To revive me again. <laughs> and to re anoint me. <laughs> I have one desire <laughs> that one day I will reach heaven. In the 1960s, she was paralyzed from the waist down. And in such a similar service like this in Zimbabwe, God lifted her up. Amen. And she ran in the, in the table, in the tabernacle where they were worshiping. You know, this God is the same. Amen. The doctors told my aunt that she won't have children. But this God is wonderful. Amen. God gave her children. Amen. Little did I know. When myself, I was brought up in this gospel, I was going to hear the same words as well. That my body cannot take care of a child. Ah, this God is wonderful. Because he carried my last child for me. I had carried two children before. But when I had the last one, the doctor said, your body cannot carry a child. But you know what? This God is wonderful. He can carry a child for you. He can deliver. Ah, a premature. He can make the premature to grow. He can revive someone from death. I was dead, but God brought me back. This God is wonderful. I'll save him the rest of my life. Um, please pray for me that I will get my sanctification before the end of camp meeting and hopefully my baptism as well. Um, secondly, <clears throat> last year I wanted to attend camp meeting, but I couldn't because I was working. And that job, I remember when I applied, I told God that, oh, if I get it, that will testify in camp meeting because it was very competitive where thousands of people get declined. But God made it possible that I got the job. So I thank God for that. Um, thirdly, last week, first day, I graduated. So I thank God for that. So please pray for me. Hallelujah. I'd like to thank God. I'd like to thank God for the privilege. You know, uh, I grew up in this gospel. I was raised by the um, Christian parents, you know, but it didn't uh, make me a Christian. Um, I had to go, I had to pray to God myself, and the Lord uh, saved my soul, and the Lord sanctified me, and the Lord baptized me with his Holy Ghost and fire. I'd like to thank God that the Lord has been keeping me, and he has been leading me, and I'd like to thank God in his time, God gave me a husband in this gospel, and, I just, and he also gave me children, and is providing for us, and I'd like to thank God for that. And you know, uh, for lately, um, I've been going through difficulty in, in getting into uni and I've been applying and applying and I've been declined and declined. And then I say to myself, okay, let me just put a prayer request to the people of God. And you know what? 
God gave me a place at uni. And I'd like to thank, you know, I, I had doubt in myself that am I able to do this? But I'm telling you, God is so wonderful. God is, you know, all of my, you know, all of my assignment, everything, the Lord has been, you know, be there for me and everything is going well. And I, and I pray to God that the, Lord, that the Lord will see me through into this uni, you know. And um, spiritually, I want to make heaven my home. Please pray for me. In John chapter 8, I'm going to read from verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him. 
and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in, a, in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Verse 8. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Amen. Neither do I condemn thee. Amen. Go Amen. and sin no more. That same message is what Jesus is bringing to every one of you today. He said, go and sin no more. As Bible students, we are very much familiar with this account. But what is very important to us tonight is a fact that this woman was condemned before she was brought to Jesus Christ. By virtue of the sin she has committed, she was to be stoned to death. That means her sinful condition was to take her to hell at last. I'm sure we all came to this camp meeting with different spiritual states. Amongst us are those who have been looking up to God for salvation, who have prayed, they've tried by their own power, but to no avail. Amongst us are those who were once Christians and maybe they've backslided. And there are others who are just struggling. Today they are up, the next day they are down. And there could even be some who are so nonchalant about the salvation of their soul. And for them, well, I'll keep coming. I'll keep coming. At some point, I'll decide, but not today. Whatever condition or state of mind that you had before you came to this camp meeting, the same message that Jesus passed to this woman, he's passing to you today. Amen. And he's telling you, go and sin no more. Amen. For this woman, she was doomed for hell. Want to retreat that hell is real. Maybe we just feel that, well, just identifying with the church, just mixing up, just coming. My parents are Christians. At some point, I will decide. For this woman, her life was just hanging. She was to be stoned to death. But maybe God spoke to the heart of the Pharisees and said, just take her to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's hear the verdict of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so we don't have all the time for those of us who think that the issue of salvation is optional. I don't have to be too serious about it. I don't need to be so, I mean, so, so, so concerned about it. Maybe at some point in my life I will think about it, but not just now. Hell is real. Hell is real. 
I'm not trying to, I mean, I mean kind of um, put fears into our hearts. No, no. We don't know if this may be the last salvation message we are going to hear. Because looking at the account of this woman, she was just at the point. She knew it was time for her to go because she had been living this notorious life of sin. And at this point that she was caught, the law had stipulated that she be put to death. So a death sentence was hanging on her. Do you know that there's a death sentence hanging on you? For all your secret life of sin? And you think it doesn't matter? Do you know that today might be your last opportunity? Do you know that in that backsliding state that anything can happen? There's a death sentence hanging on the head of every unsaved soul. All right. That's true. And the Bible tells us that God is angry with every unsaved soul on a daily basis. It's a pitiable situation that while you were coming out from your cabin, coming from your accommodation block, walking in here as an unsafe soul, that the anger of Jesus is just on your head. It's a pertinent situation that while you were coming to this camp meeting, Jesus is not happy with you because you've heard so much about salvation. You've heard about this Jesus. One of the songs we, we, we rendered said, won't you let this Jesus be your savior too? You've been told about the Savior, about the crucified Christ yeah. who died on the cross of Calvary for yeah. your sin. Indeed. And for you, I don't care so much about that. I have my life to live. There's many more days. You know, oftentimes, when we try to say that we don't have all the time, that the time is short, you know, to our greatest amazement, we go to bed and we wake up again. And when we wake up, we become so bold and said, they've been telling me this. They said this a year ago, and here I am. So that means I have all the time. You don't have all the time. And so this woman, she came to Jesus in a depressed situation. Just like Paul the apostle said before he got converted, he said, who shall deliver me from the body of sin? He was struggling, struggling with sin. Struggling with smoking, struggling with drinking, struggling with immorality. Name it, all sorts of sin. But at some point he got saved. That was the condition of this woman. And for those of us who have been weighed down by the power of sin, who've tried our best, who've struggled, I'm sure at some point we've taken decision, but we see ourselves falling back again. Yeah. But tonight, yeah. tonight, is going to be a different state. Amen. Just like we've read, the woman came to Jesus. I was trying to picture what her state could be, what the condi her condition of heart could be while she was standing before Jesus. Remember at this point, being caught in sin, she was ashamed of herself. Right. She felt convicted. Right. She knew she was a sinner. There was nothing to hide. She accepted that fact. She acknowledged that fact that she has sinned against God. But for her, there was no hope. It was just the verdict of Jesus that could just change things. So while she was standing and Jesus stood down and was scribbling on the ground, I'm sure the woman in her heart would have been praying and said, Mercy. Yeah. Yeah. I said, Mercy. Yeah. If I could just have this opportunity, yeah. if Jesus would not cite the Pharisees, you know, to condemn me to death, I'm going to take a decision for him. She felt so convicted of her sins. She felt so weighed down by what she has done. Just like you should be today. Is it nothing to you that you are heading to hell? 
Do you feel convicted about your sin or your heart is hardened? Just like this woman. As you've come to the presence of Jesus in this camp meeting, there is one thing that Jesus will want you to do and that is be pleading for mercy. Like I earlier said, his anger is already hanging on you. Like I earlier said, there's a death sentence already hanging on your head. So just like, you know, somebody who before the judge, you know, he knows that he is he's already guilty. You know, that's how we are before the presence of Jesus. But let's see what happened. You know, while she was in the presence of Jesus Christ, after a while, Jesus stood up and looked at the woman and said, woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee? I'm sure she would have been shivering. She would have been so tensed up. What would be the decision of Jesus? Remember in her heart, she had been crying for mercy. She had been praying for mercy. Because she knew that once she passes on, there will be no room for mercy again. So that was just the last chance that she had. She just needed to cry for mercy. And you know, the Bible tells us that Jesus is so many science. He's reading what is in your heart. He knows the state of your mind. He knows if you've taken a decision to repent and turn away from your sin. He knows all that. So Jesus would have read the state of this woman's heart. Jesus would have looked into her heart and discovered that she has acknowledged her sins. That deep down within her, she has already taken a decision. And so Jesus said to her, woman, where are thine accusers? As Jesus looks at your heart right now, is he seeing any indication that you are taking a decision to repent of your sin? Or what he's seeing in your heart is that, well, after the camp meeting, I will think about this salvation. What is he seeing in your heart? Is he seeing a decision to still continue with your old sinful habits? Or is he seeing tears of mercy? Crying for mercy. Because tonight might be the last night. And so when Jesus stood up and said to the woman, where are thine accusers? Had no man accused thee or condemned thee? And she said, no man, Lord. I can see her with her two hands, you know, telling Jesus, no man, Lord. I can see her weighed down in our sinful condition, you know, broken and contrite in heart, saying, Jesus, no man, Lord. And Jesus Seen a heart, yeah. you know, said to her, yeah. Neither do I condemn you. Yeah. In Romans chapter 8, in verse 1, the Bible tells us that, that there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah. At that very point, the condemnation of sin was removed yeah. from yeah. Yeah. At that very point, the death sentence. Yeah was taken away yeah. from her. At that very point, the anger of God Amen. that was upon her head Amen. was taken away. Amen. She became a changed person. Yeah. That's why Paul the Apostle recorded in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians rather, chapter 5, in verse 17. And he tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, Hallelujah. he's a new creature. Yeah. You know, when you come to Jesus, you can never go back again the same. You can never go back again the same. This woman never left the presence of Jesus the same. And what amazes me is what Jesus said to her. He said, go and sin no more. There was victory. There was power. When Jesus saves, he gives the power not to go back again to sin. Once he sees that decision in your heart, that you have made up your mind, that you have cried to him, that you have taken a decision not to go back again to your sins. At that very point, Jesus, just like he said to this woman, he's going to tell you, go and sin no more. In John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible tells us, but as many as receive him, 
to them gave it power to become the sons of God. In this camp meeting, the Lord is going to grant you that salvation. We don't want it to be tomorrow. We want it to be tonight. Jesus will give you that salvation. And when he gives you salvation, he will give you the power to go and sin no more. Have you been struggling with sin? Ups and downs? Nonchalant about your sinful condition? This evening, don't allow this chance to pass you. It was the last chance for that woman, and she grabbed that opportunity. Will you grab the opportunity today? I can assure you of any other opportunity again. This evening, Jesus can give you that salvation. Take a decision. Wherever you are up there, come to the altar. Young people, come and pray, and Jesus will save you tonight. He will give you a new life tonight, and you will never be the same again. Father, send the spirit of repentance our way in Jesus' name. Lord, send the true repentance in our heart in Jesus' name. Father, we plead your everlasting God to come and crush the stubborn heart in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to surrender tonight in Jesus' name. We want to go and sin no more in Jesus' name. We expect salvation to us in Jesus' name. Shower salvation on us in Jesus' name. Shower your sanctification on us in Jesus' name. Lord, shower your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Set us free to go and see no more. We thank you for accepting our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.